One of Gosman's teammates, former giant Brandon Belt, spoke to reporters yesterday before the game. And really interesting to hear Brandon Belt now that he's no longer a giant. He's with Toronto. And he actually said yesterday he's kind of happy the way things went. You know, I thought there would always be always a chance that I'd be going back there. I think, you know, really up until the day that I signed with Toronto. So it was it was definitely a weird offseason, to say the least. But, you know, I'm happy the way things turned out. You know, it's baseball. I've played with a lot of guys that have moved on. I've had a lot of my friends go to other teams. And so you always know that there's a chance that you're not going to. And in fact, it's, it's likely you won't be with the same team your whole career. Strange, but you know I've, I've had a lot of fun over here. And I was fortunate enough to get with a really good team with a bunch of really good guys. So you know I think that's that's made the transition a lot easier. Always makes it easier. But what is it with uh, we in the media and us as fans, Larry? Why do we have such a hard time with players leaving? Brandon Belt was a great giant. He's a forever giant. He won two World Series here and. Now he's going on to be elsewhere. Why do fans have such a hard time with that? Well, I mean, you know, because it's all about who's coming next. And at the time, it was like, you're going to hand the first base over to Lamont Wade. Lamont Wade had a terrible year last year. He hit 207. And Lamont Wade didn't have a huge track record of success. So to say that, hey, we're going with Lamont Wade was like a real vote of, con- vote of you know, have some confidence in us. 207 with no track record and you're waving goodbye to Brandon Belt. Um, but I think Belt's, you know, Belt's in a lineup now with all kinds of bats, and he doesn't have to shoulder the load. And you're right, he's a great giant. I never quite understood the the polarization or you know the polarizing nature of this player. I mean, listen to what he just said there. He's just an easygoing guy from right. Texas who's just, you know, he's a chill guy. I mean, he's a. I've interviewed him a bunch of times. You have as well. Yep. He's just a laid back, easygoing fun-loving guy whose teammates like, and he's funny, and he kind of leaned into it last year with the whole captains. Pretty deal. fun, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's a cool guy. I mean, I, I always like Brandon Belt, um, but he he's kind of like, uh, and for old, you know younger Giants fans, you won't be able to relate to this one, but he's a lot like Jack Clark. Um, and, and Jack Clark played in the Jack 70s. Jack was more of a red ass, as I recall. Jack Clark, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, Brandon Belt's, you know, he's he's pretty country. Yeah. Um, but Jack Clark was a Pennsylvania guy, I think then was born in Pennsylvania, maybe grew up in L.A. But um, but what I mean is very, took a ton of pitches, right? Oh, yeah. And would hit home runs early in games with nobody on. Then he comes up, bases loaded, seventh, eighth, ninth, and takes a called third and walks back to the dugout. But Jack walked a ton, and Belt walks a ton. Yeah, and if you're gonna be one of those guys that draws walks, that means that you and you got a big strike zone. Jack was six three, six four. Belt's what six five, That's six same. six. Yeah, yeah. You got a big strike zone. I just feel like they. I never understood all the hatred about Belt because it was body guy, language, and, and it was exactly what you're describing. Where too many strikeouts, big spot. It's like swing the bat, but yeah. that's not. You know, he was very meticulous and still is about the strike zone, and he wouldn't chase. And you know, borderline pitches. Sometimes you get the walk, other times you get the punch out. But he also like I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I kind of think of him as a guy who's good in October. You know, who's good in the playoffs. I was at uh, you know a, a restaurant on the peninsula when watching him when he hit that bomb. In the 16th at uh, in DC to beat the Nats, and that was a that was one of the great moments in the Giants' run. Um, and I just always felt like Brandon Belt was a dependable guy in October that kind of rose to the level yeah. of po- of you know for the rose to the occasion in the playoffs. And yet, Giants fans, I mean, you, if you meet five Giants fans who are like rah rah Belt, there's five more guys going he sucks. I'm yeah, very kidding. polarizing. It's a good way to describe it. And uh, 796 OPS this year. Really solid. He had a slow start, had a hit yesterday, had a, a double in that spot before getting a pinch run for. He had a nice exchange with Brandon Crawford where Crawford asked him, hey, do you want the baseball? And Belt, yeah, I'll take the ball. He got a hit against his own, own team, so Crawford throws the ball into the Blue Jays' dugout. You mentioned Lamont Wade last year hitting two oh four, and how many people lost faith in Lamont Wade Jr. One man who didn't, Brandon Belt. I've definitely been keeping up with Lamont. I've always been a really big believer in Lamont because I've seen his approach. I've seen the physical tools he has, and he's going to be able to do what he's been doing this year for a long time. So first base in San Francisco is definitely in good hands, and I've loved seeing it because the guy is so humble, and he cares about his teammates, and his teammates care about him. So I know everybody's excited to see him do that. And he likes the tools because Lamont Wade Jr. 
does what Belt does. He takes a lot of walks, and his yeah. his OPS is eight sixty seven. His on base Larry is four ten. Late night Lamont, so and it's down to four ten. It was like four forty or right. something. Right, oh for four yesterday, which is going to hurt the old OBP. But Lamont's a great guy too. It's like a, you know, I, I was down in Arizona this uh, this March, and the Jacks have a really small clubhouse, and he did some interviews, and just like you know, he's just a he's just an easy going guy. But I mean, there was no reason to think that Lamont was going to be have a big year this year. He, you know, I mean. But I guess last year it was more about physical. It was more about him, his body breaking down and him just not being right. But um, he's putting the charge into the baseball right now, and he's getting on base. And he's actually, I mean, he's not the, he's not Brandon Belt defensively at first, but he's holding his own. I mean, um, and a Farhan find, and uh, another Farhan find coming through big yesterday. JD Davis goes two for three, he's been raises great. his average to two eighty nine, and you know you, you bring in Blake Sable. As a Rule 5 guy, Tyro Estrada with a couple of hits. He drove in a couple of insurance runs in that ninth inning. Farhan Zaidi, man, he he's done some things, and I guess it's bearing fruit now. These are all moves that he made previously, but it's all coming through now, and it's bearing fruit. I want to get into more of the surprise nature of this Giants team, and I'm going to ask Larry about sustainability. Do you think it's sustainable? 888 Ninety-five seventy. The Giants are hot, ten in a row on the road. Can they keep this up, or is this just a an anomaly at how well they are playing?